Ben and Paul here today and we're going to be talking about connection with the new Gen 2 systems. It's a hot topic since uh, the Gen 2 released Yep. and we're here to educate everyone a little bit more about how the controller talks to the foil drive and how the board makes a big difference, your personal understanding of how that whole system works, your gear, how you've set it up, and how you actually go about holding the controller, positioning the controller, exactly, and positioning your board in the water and stuff like that too. So, so. this is a video for those that just want to get the most out of their kit, and also for those that are struggling, mm -hmm. because we've seen this a lot personally, we've done plenty of events, mm -hmm. we've helped hundreds of people learn to foil or ride or test Gen 2, We've seen this firsthand. Knowledge is incredibly important when it comes to this sort of stuff. And we're gonna do our very best to have a preliminary overview. This will be followed up with a really in-depth, actual real world filmed in the water. Yeah, another masterclass, masterclass series. series to really help close those gaps. So the yeah. good news is that there's probably a lot of performance gains that you're gonna get after watching this video that you don't have now, because mm -hmm. you don't understand the intricacies, which is, it's much like foiling. Yeah. You don't just go down the shop and buy your foil and instantly become an expert exactly. on shimming tails and moving yeah. masks and You've that You've got to sort of understand stuff. how foils work, how they fly, how they lift, yeah. the balance, the techniques, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of theory, I guess, that you've got to understand so that when you go out and actually try and put it into practice, you know what you're trying to achieve. Correct. What you're, what you're trying to do, so. And we also want to dispel some myths and just common misunderstandings. Yeah because unfortunately the internet does have a habit of congregating some of the worst bits of information yeah. and people assume that it just propagates across everything. It's not the case. There's yeah. only a handful of people on boards that are having problems, which I think hopefully this video will help solve a lot of them. Yeah. Whereas there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other people foiling every day having a ball mm -hmm. and like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Signal's perfect. So we're gonna delve into that as always with Foil Drive, we're incredibly open and transparent and we mm -hmm. want to help our customers yep. as much as possible. We do care, bear with us. Let's get into it. Yep, cool. Let's start with the very basics of wireless signal. Yep. And how do we control something? We have a motor that's in one location and we have a finger or a, some people use in the tongue or whatever to control that unit. So let's talk about wireless signal and communications wirelessly without cables, things right. like that. So this is not Bluetooth, people think it is, it's not. It's a 2.4 gigahertz signal, mm -hmm. which transmits from this guy wirelessly through the air or through a board in this case, yep. to another antenna. It's, think of it like a remote control for a remote control car yep. or an aeroplane or yep. something like that. Or your phone, you can think, yep. sometimes the phone is trying to talk to the tower that's up on the hill in town yep. and it's a wireless connection. So 2.4 gigahertz, what blocks 2.4? It's specifically in the environment that we're riding. Correct. So the signal is not like a laser beam where you can shoot something with it. Yep. It radiates out like an endless wave, if you will. Mm -hmm. I'll pause there. Anyone that's a full-on radio expert that knows all this sort of stuff, we are going to we are going to trivialize this. Don't send us comments saying that that that. We are yeah. going to pull this right back because no one wants to hear us waffling on. They just want the answer <laughs> and the solution. Exactly. So it sends out signal pretty much everywhere, yeah. and the concept is that your antenna is somewhere in that environment, mm -hmm. and it picks up on it and it uses it. So it's not directional. Yeah. It's it goes everywhere. Exactly. Um, so wirelessly, we talk to the, the antenna in the box, it gets a signal, it runs the motor. Mm -hmm. Now, with Gen 2, it's no secret, the box is under the water and it's wireless and there's no antenna, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. For most setups, it's perfectly clean and you don't have an antenna that you're gonna snap off. Damage, yeah. So there's always pros and, pros and cons here, yeah. so. Two things that block signal. Two things that block signal. Water, Water. massive one and boards yes in our materials. in our world let's call it water and materials sure so water and materials so water i mean that blocks basically most signals unless you go really really technical but you take your phone and you jump in the ocean with it it's not going to work it's not going to get signal you get a handheld uhf radio mm. jump in the water it's not going to work so you try and you talk have, underwater correct. you can't hear someone exactly. what it does it absorbs the, it absorbs the energy, yeah. basically. Yeah. See, That's this is energy, signals. voice is energy. It yeah. just absorbs yeah. it. So. so if we've got water between this and our box, mm -hmm. 
we've got a problem. Correct. And doesn't take a huge amount of water. Water's no. very, very good at blocking. And the other one being materials. Yep. So we've got glass boards. Mm -hmm. We've got foam, well, all boards effectively, let's just say all boards have foam inside them. As far as I know. More or less. <laughs> we've got glass and a couple of layers of glass, yep. top and bottom. Fiber between glass. Foam, fiber glass. Yep. And we've got carbon fiber. And then we've got different types of carbon fiber, different layups, different layers of yep. carbon fiber in different orientations. Yep. Um, different amounts of resin compared to actual carbon fiber, how the layers are laid out, all that kind of stuff. So carbon fiber also is pretty good well, blocking signal. At the end of the day. But not yes. really bad. Yeah. This is where it's good to understand what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So typically you don't want to make anything out of carbon fiber that you want a signal to go in. We both come from a remote control airplane world. Yeah. And a lot of attention is normally paid to making sure that your antenna isn't blocked by a full carbon fibre fuselage. Right. These things are basically mm -hmm. fuselages yeah. where it's a carbon fibre thing. Yeah. So, but and close proximity, which is nice, but we have yeah. a lot of water around, Correct. which is bad. Model aeroplanes a long way away. That's why the carbon becomes very important. Now, understanding carbon fibre is not a perfectly dense piece of material. Mm -hmm. It's not a lump of tungsten or something yeah. like it. That's incredibly dense. If you kept zooming in on it with a magnifying glass, deeper, 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 it's just lots of little weaves. Yeah, even if and, you look at your foils yeah. or your boards, these beautiful apple tree boards, you can see all the carbon. And they are, they are a weave. It's a weave and you if look you- Look at that yourself, yeah. The more you zoom in, it ends up being more and more gaps. Swiss cheese. Basically. <laughs> Very strong, expensive Swiss cheese. Whereas a fiberglass board is the same. It has a weave, but it's made out of a different material that doesn't block the signal yeah. or disperse the signal yeah. in the same way. So the reason why fiberglass boards work really, really well is, is the material that they're made from doesn't disperse or block the signal. Yeah whereas carbon fiber can, but that doesn't mean that carbon fiber won't work. Mm -hmm. It is just blocking more of that signal, yeah. but this is the thing. You don't need 100% signal mm -hmm. for the box to work. Yeah. You might be operating on 50% signal on this board, for example, mm -hmm. and 100% on this signal, and you would know no different. Absolutely no different. No different. Yeah. So as long as there's a connection, mm -hmm. it will function. Yeah. It's and when I guess you- the analogy here that we talked about mm -hmm. before was like, with your phone, you walk into your house, there is a material blocking your phone from the tower that's up on the hill. Yep. Works totally fine. There's a fiberglass thing in the way, or there's a bunch of timber and sticks and whatever, yep. effectively blocking your phone from the tower, it works fine. You jump into like a hospital or a big shopping center, or hospitals are particularly bad because there's a lot of RF. Or going to train, or substation. Or going to train, anything like that. Yep. You've got, we should also mention that metal is generally speaking, sometimes harder to transmit through, things like that, but we don't have a huge amount of metals involved here other than our actual box. Aluminium masks don't really come into this equation, but you have, in a hospital with the phone analogy, you've got a lot of stuff in the way, you've got a lot of density, density you've yeah. got a lot of um, X-ray machines and all those kind of, and lots of comms running through the building and all that kind of stuff, and that's where your phone starts to struggle. What's also important to remember here, as Paul said, you might be running on 50% signal strength, let's call it, but you'd have absolutely no difference. That, the analogy falls apart when you're talking about a phone because a phone, we go, well, the internet's slow mm -hmm. when you've only got two bars of signal. Yep. You can still send a text. The text yep. goes straight out and comes straight back in, even if you're on one bar of signal. And you can have a phone call on one bar or yeah. five bars, makes no difference. It's yeah. a data rate. So for, exactly. so for this analogy, we're trying to- It's a phone call. Yeah, we're not trying to get much information across to here to here. Yep. We're just trying to say, I want 20% throw, I want 50% yep. throw, and it's yep. saying, my battery's at 60% yep. and feeding it back. So there's And I think a phone call is a good analogy yeah. because even when a phone call is patchy, mm -hmm. when you're on the raggedy edge of signal, you can still understand what yeah. someone's exactly. basically saying. Which is and it's very similar to some conversation later on down the yep. track too about managing this phone cool. call analogy. So water and materials. Carbon is block signal worse than uh, fiberglass. Correct but not fully. And again, it comes down to how many layers there are of yeah. glass, different boards. So for example, when we were doing the testing for Gen 2, leading into the release and all that kind of stuff, we had, we've got hundreds of boards that we've tested ourselves personally with our test riders, yep. some of which are here. This starboard board, for example, this was our test bed for a long time. If yep. we could get this board to work, 
we're pretty confident that most boards would work. Yep. It needs to be also recognized that there is thousands of boards in the world. There is also yep. thousands of different ways of laying things up. We're a retrofit product. We don't sell or make boards. No. Companies change the way that they make boards all the time. Um, we've had examples of boards that the 2022 board works really, really well and no problems, and the 2023 board doesn't work so well, tested by the same person, so we take those variables out as well. So even though you look at the website and it's no different, it's just a new shape, they've changed something for sure. So, and the layups. And the layups. So some people make a board on a Monday, and they're fresh, had a long weekend, great. Yeah. And then by Friday, they're over it, they want to go home. Yeah. And this is not layup, at all so. having a dig or... It's just different boards. It's just different boards, different, different companies, all that kind of stuff. So, But that circles all the way back around to the third thing is technique. Yes. Of how to work with the signal in the box. Understanding and technique. Which has actually a greater impact mm -hmm. than the materials. Yeah. And, you know, the, the signal in the box itself. It's how to use it. And it's very similar to foiling. You can have terrible technique and have a terrible time in the water, mm -hmm. and then some other guy or girl jumps on the same board yep. and rips it up, and they're like, how are you so good? And I'm Which struggling to it. the same yep. foiling in general. Yep. There's 95 kilo pro riders that can ride a wing that's designed for me at 60 kilos, yep. and other people can't do that or other ways around. So it's, it's understanding technique, yep. skill, and a little bit of perseverance as well. Yep. So, so we're gonna get into how to put technique and understanding to better use yep. to radically improve your experience and ability to use different boards and in different scenarios. Yeah. Because I think that's the bit that's lacking. Exactly. And yeah, so we're getting let's, into that. Let's continue with the understanding of how it works. So we know that it's 2.4, we know it's wireless. We know that water and materials can block or reduce the signal strength. Yep. Let's talk about it specifically of how it's working in a Gen 2 system and when we're in the water with our little diagram over here and stuff like that. So let's jump into how do we get the signal when the board is underwater, whether it's yeah. a SUP that is floating on the surface or whether it's a little tiny baby prone board with a heavier rider that's mm -hmm. underwater, how can we make it work and it does work? All right. I mean, a lot of this is on the fly. So yes. <laughs> if you hope if you come this far, clearly you want the help. So exactly. we'll try not to waffle on, but I think I was, we were talking about analogies. Imagine there's a door and the door is shut but someone drills a hole through it, mm -hmm. a little tiny hole. That is a carbon board, mm -hmm. right? A really dense, good quality, good quality, well laid carbon that has very good at blocking the signal. And then you've got, not to say that this is in good quality, this just transmits signal better than this one. So this is another door, but someone's drilled more holes in it. And this one here is a different door where it's someone's just had at it with a shotgun and it's Buckets just, of holes through it, there's yeah. just thousands of holes through yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And you're standing in front of those three doors and you're pulling the trigger and some signal is going to transmit out and it's going to find its way mm -hmm. through those holes. And as long as it gets through one hole yeah. and finds the antenna, you will get a signal and it will work. Yeah. Again, low low signal strength on your phone, you can still send text yep. backwards and forwards. That's all yep. we're trying to do. Yep. So the further away you are from those doors, imagine if this was spraying out water like a, like a fountain mm -hmm. everywhere. <laughs> the further you are away from those holes, the less chance that a little drop of water is going to go through. Yep. Exactly. The closer you get, the more intense that water is or the more intense the signal is, the more yep. probability you're going to get some signal through those holes in very broad, rough mm -hmm. terms. Yeah. The closer you get, the better and working on that same analogy it's, it's a little bit like having making a hole in your hand the closer you bring it to your eye mm -hmm. the greater the field of view you get so yep. there's a probability of it getting in mm -hmm. but then there's field of view which yep. is a very different again, thing like said, this is not a laser pointer we can't point it directly at the hole and go yep. there signal we're just spraying it out hoping Correct. that something gets through there it's like a shotgun so <laughs> there's probability of it getting through a hole which is material yeah and then there's how close you get to the hole, which is field of view. And this will yep. become more, yep. uh, why does that, what is he talking about, Paul? Yep. This controller has an antenna, supposed to hold it like this, on the left hand side of the screen, of the screen right in here. Mm -hmm. So 
when you put it near a board or on a board, if you were to lay it left hand side down on the board, the antenna is as close as it can possibly be to the surface of the board. Yeah. That is the equivalent of me walking up to the wall or the door and putting my eye right up against the hole and, and all of a sudden, away. all of a sudden I can see everyone in the room. Yeah. But if I walk back a bit, I can only see a tiny little hole. Yeah. My vision is really narrow. So yeah. the closer this gets to the board, the greater field of view it has to try and like almost look down the inside or send its signal down. Mm -hmm. If I bring it up, its field of view to get into the board and bounce around and find its way into the box radically reduces. Yeah. Now, if you're on glass, it's fine. Yeah, as that's... long as any portion of that board is visible, no, yeah, out of the out water, of the water yeah. it'll find its way in and bounce around and get into yeah. the box. Yeah. With carbon, you've got less holes. Yes. So there's less chance of it getting in. Yeah. So I think that is one of the main, I hope that, I think the yeah. analogy is pretty good. Yeah. It's distance from controller mm. to board improves things. Which is effectively what you've drawn on this yeah. uh, diagram here. So if the board is out of the water, because again, the water is very, very, very good at blocking the signal. Yep. Any water over the top of everything between controller and box yep. is basically going to kill it. Our board is a pipe, is a hole in a door, is a down pipe from a gutter to a drain. However you want to visualize that, it is a thoroughfare. We're just using this. Signal. Yeah. Just using this as a medium to transmit a signal. And an right. easier way to understand, I think, to describe it is, this board is basically just a big piece of air trapped inside a skin. Yeah. That's why when you use the controller properly, like I do when I'm duck diving under a wave, mm -hmm. I'll grab the nose of the board and I'll push the controller onto the nose of the board and hold it. Yeah. I can actually motor under the wave for a few seconds boop, and pop back out because I've still got full signal because despite me and the board being completely submerged, mm -hmm. As far as the controller and the board's concerned, if they're touching like that, yeah. I'm actually transmitting through air, not through water. As well, soon one layer of carbon, which we've determined what, is sorry. okay, yep. and then through air. Or through foam. a bit of carbon, yep. and then mainly foam, which yep. is air on the molecular level. Mm -hmm. This is basically just air, yep. and it gets in. As soon as I lift the control up a bit, yep. I'm screwed because I'm now asking it to transmit through water. Correct. So if we go and to our... Is, and that is when the board is completely underwater. Yeah. It's important to note two things here. One, if you're on a prone board but it's glass, the distance that you can move the controller away from the board is greater, yep. or the potential is greater, because again, this is a door with a bunch of big holes in it. You've yep. got a greater chance of getting it through. And various different designs or layouts of boards also do that. Yep. Then once you look at size too, so putting the controller on the surface of the board is a great solution for a difficult to transmit through board yep. that is also quite small and you are able to lay on it. When we start talking about, we don't want to forget about our subwriters, that if you've got a controller on a paddle handle, if you're on a glass board mm -hmm. that's high volume and it's lifting you right out of the water, it's a 70 kilo rider or a 100 litre board, the board's generally above the water, so tick for water, yep. and then we've got lots of holes we can shoot from a long way away. This does not write off carbon fibre subs, because there's obviously lots and lots of carbon fibre subs. Mm. We have team riders here in-house for both Axis, Amos, DC paddle boards that do carbon ones as well. Uh, there's a guy with a one sub. There's plenty of carbon fibre subs that we've also yep. tested, and it's important to note that this proximity of the controller to the board does not rule out carbon fiber subs. No, so it comes back to technique. Again, yeah. Um, when you're downwinding and there's water sloshing everywhere and it's really rough, it's a very different experience to you're sitting on a nice flat lake just yeah. e-foiling around. Yeah. Could be exactly the same hardware, mm -hmm. but again, if you use the right technique, you should be able to use yeah. the Which gear. We'll get into the technique yeah. really in depth in the masterclass video. But for this video, Again, that concept of, again, 70 kilo rider on a 100 litre board, but in downwind conditions, there might be water sloshing over the top of the board and the nose going in and out and all that kind of stuff. Yep. You're trying to stand up and then your control is a long way away. Yep. You're adding in that factor of water. Yep. is usually so, what's blocking it, not the carbon board. Getting some momentum going first so that the 
so that the um, board is above the surface of the water to eliminate that. Get the water, water off thing. the board. Yep. Again, water is the biggest blocker of signal. Yep. Carbon board with the foam in the tracks, as described in our install videos. Yep. You can definitely still sup. We have plenty of riders, yep. ourselves and customers, riding carbon fiber sups yep. with no problems. Contr control on the paddle up above the head. It's technique becomes more important. The more difficult we make it with design of boards, or the more difficult you make your setup in terms of design and construction of boards and the size and the water, the better your technique has to be. Correct. If you're on a glass sup, do whatever the hell you want. Yeah, pretty well. <laughs> so in summary, to move on to the next one is, imagine if you've got the controller up in the air and you're pulling the trigger, your field of view into the board is quite narrow. Whereas, I don't know if you can zoom in on this, but when the controller is pressed, there we go. Whoop. So you've got up in the air, your field of view is quite narrow, assuming there's a bit of board poking out from the water. If the remote is pressed hard up against the board, the field of view is huge, just like as if your eye was pressed up against a hole in a door. But then if you were to put the water line along here, completely submerged, this is useless to you because it's going to be blocked by water, but this technique of pressing it up against the surface of the board still works because it's actually looking through the board, not through water. So that helps. Now, one of the next fundamental misunderstandings is time and using the, using the trigger. So if we haven't made this more clear in the past, we apologize and we're addressing it now. We've seen this, we've done this, we've done countless demos. The remote control needs to talk to the box as we've established. Mm -hmm. It needs a board to talk through and it's like a phone call. So if you've got no signal, there's no phone call, no one knows what's going on. Yeah. Just like when you answer a phone, you need to have a, just a small period of time for both people to actually realize, oh, the calls started. The call started, then someone starts talking and then a conversation starts. Imagine this controller is the phone and I'm calling Ben mm -hmm. and until our phones connect or controller and boxes connect, if I'm already talking, oh Ben, I want to see it. the surf pumping, let's go, go, go. And you answer the phone call mid conversation oh, and he hasn't, whoa, whoa, whoa. you're like, yeah. what? The, a pumping? What are you yeah. talking about? No, well, I've yeah. already said oh, the surf's pumping. To too, straight away. Yeah. We don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. So the controller wants to see 0% throttle. The box wants to see 0% throttle for it to arm the motor. It's a safety thing. And the, yeah. the main point of that, you fall in the water, you're climbing back onto your board and you're still holding the trigger and it's like 100% throttle. It won't actually arm mm -hmm. until you let go of the throttle, it sees zero mm -hmm. for at least a second, then it'll start working. Right. So I've witnessed this myself in the surf. If you're getting frustrated because you've lost link and lost signal, but you've still got your finger on the throttle, it will never run. Start again, because it's not going to rearm. You've lost signal yep. from a better clicking that around again. If you're in this scenario where the nose is going in and out of the water and you're going from signal, no yes. signal, signal, no signal, and then you go signal, oh sweet, pull the throttle, start moving, nose goes under, lose signal. And you're still holding the throttle. Not assuming you're doing good technique, you're yeah. doing the wrong thing or whatever. You're gonna, you're still holding a bit of throttle or you're mashing at it going, come on, come on, go, 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 yeah. and it's not going. So that's the main it's problem. It's going shush, 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 shush. Okay, now I'll go. I've yep. got a good connection. Now you can pull the yep. trigger. So in summary, doing this, oh, annoying. Yeah. It won't work. The yep. box is just going to say, I've got signal. I can see you're asking for 0, 100, 0, 100, 0, 50, 0, 70, 0. It's just going to say, no, nah. until you calm down yep. and give me zero throttle for at yep. least a second, you and I are not having fun. Yeah. So Which is, again, the understanding of how the system works. Yeah. The understanding of how the signal works, yep. to, so that you can get everything into a position that you know the signal is going to yep. be there. Then wait, then pull the throttle. So yep. it is, and like everything in foiling, most people don't just jump on a foil on the first day and just ride off into the sunset. No. This is the same. Sometimes with some people and some setups, it can take a little bit of perseverance and a little bit of again understanding, which we hope to deliver in this video, yep. and then some practice and looking at that. The majority. Technique. The majority of the issues I've seen yep. and helped people with have got nothing to do with the hardware or the board. Yep. 
as being the fundamental problem. It's just the not understanding how to work with their overall system mm -hmm. to make it easier for themselves. Yeah. And that's the best bit. There's so many opportunities to improve what you know and do and actually have a better experience. So in summary, in the top left-hand corner of your controller, there's a tiny little T symbol. There's a little T signal. It looks exactly like the signal of a phone. Little bars. That's the signal between your remote and the box. You have to have at least one bar mm -hmm. and it goes all the way up to four bars. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you've got a signal. Now, that's easier said than done sometimes when you're sloshing around in the ocean and you can't see anything. Mm -hmm. The best way to get signals to take your finger off the controller, well, sorry, the best way to make sure that you're not dealing with the throttle that's all over the place mm -hmm. is just let go of the throttle, wait, and then slowly advance it. If it doesn't do anything. Yeah, and literally like wait and go one and two and. and then, and just slowly okay. no, pull the trigger yeah. and see if it works. If it's not doing anything, then you don't have signal. Yeah. Next step, take your finger off the throttle, get the controller closer to the board and try again. Mm -hmm. Now I know perfectly well in the ocean, this fiberglass board will just basically run if I can see anything yellow above the surface, above the surface of, the of the water, we're on baby. Yeah. When I fought downwind this, I know that I have to have the controller at least like this. There's still a gap, but it's just not, Closer. it's yeah. com quite compliant. Yeah. Now I'm proning, so I'm on the board anyway. Mm -hmm. There are some boards which, uh, you know, if it's completely submerged, I know I just want to put it on the deck of the board yeah. to get signal. And now again, same process, put it on, wait a second, slowly pull the throttle, Ooh, sure enough, there's a the motor, starts pushing me, off I go. And this is where it leads into the next better technique. So the technique we just used then was not mashing the throttle mm -hmm. and causing it to not run, because it's like, hey, just chill, give me zero, mm -hmm. tick. Yeah. Then the next technique is find where the controller needs to be if you're on a really small board or a full carbon board. And this is prioritizing the really small, difficult setups being prone boards. Yeah. Yeah. Sup boards, yes, it can help to get the controller closer. Yeah. But generally on a sup board, you have less problems with water. We have big problems with water, with the small prone yeah. boards. The sups, it's more of a technique of just make sure the nose of the board is nice and high out of the water. Yeah, yeah maybe you do need to lean down just a little bit Again, wait, make sure the nose is out, get the controller a little bit closer, pull the trigger, get it moving, and then you can stand back yeah. up. It's, so as we go through these steps- Masterclass will be very good for- yeah, Visualizing this. As we go through these steps, you'll just find that at a certain step, you no longer have problems. Yeah. Because you've gone through the technique step to get closer and closer and closer. Um, so, and most of this is referencing, we're right, really course, talking about the hardest stuff, the hardest stuff. carbon, right. everything, basically under the water, all that yes. sort of stuff. Yeah. So just keep playing around with where you find good signal. Now you will find that some boards up around the nose, some actually have a certain spot where it's really, really good and other spots, yeah. it's and difficult. Like the rails generally have more layers of carbon, so mm. they're gonna block yeah. more signal. Center of the board, yeah. center nose of the board up around here. It's yeah. generally built pretty light. They don't need the strength. Correct. There. So then if it's not working here, Try pressing against the surface. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is, I've got signal, get yeah. going. So at that point, once you've worked out, okay, I need to have the controller either closer, near to the nose, or pressed up against the board and I can get signal, that's when you can move to the next step. That does not mean that you have to foil around everywhere, bent over with your controller touching the board. Right. It does not. We're talking about the initial stage of getting link, getting the motor to run, and then moving. And the then you're moving in the pace. water. So once you get moving, mm -hmm. me personally, I'm a heavy guy. I'm pretty Fine, much small always got my board mm -hmm. close to or basically under the water, yeah. basically yeah, a little bit yeah. popping out. So I'm very used to this. Once you get link and you start moving the board, even if you've got a small percentage of throttle on, a lot of water will start to drain away from the board. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not fully out, you'll notice that- a bow wave, they're yeah. pushing the water away. You're adding a little bit of tilt and water will drain away from the board. As soon as that happens, you start to get better and better signal back. So I know that when I'm in the water, I go boost, get moving, and then actually I know I can come back and I can start crawling to my knees and mucking around and using my hand to push on it. I don't have to constantly have my hand here. Yeah. But I do have to start here on real single small boards. Mm -hmm. But as you get going, you will find over time that you can start moving them and you can have your controller even not even yeah. on the board and you're clambering to your feet getting ready to go because you've started moving, water drains off, yeah. 
more more wing, uh, viewing window, mm -hmm. more holes, signal to get in, yep. better signal, and off you go. Yep. So, which that, we, again will yep. show that in the Perfect masterclass video. video. But also, we've had a lot of people saying, "Well, then I can't do my double L over paddle that you talked about in the previous masterclass video about getting small boards and wings out." You can still do that. It's just about when you start that process. Yep. So we've gone through step one, get the signal, get moving. Get get signal, get the motor running, get the board moving. Now that the board is starting to plough through the water and starting to like clear water away from the board, mm -hmm. then you start looking at the techniques in the masterclass video for takeoff technique yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. And then as you really, by that point, the board is just about planing across the surface of the water. The signal is still good, your control is still in a good position. And then if you do need to then switch to going double arm paddle, which is a control in your hand, taking it away, once the board is up and planing and the signal is over the crest of it's difficult, 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 difficult board signal, board. it's come good, and now we've got to mm. take away from the signal technique ideal and go to takeoff technique ideal. The board's already planing, there's so much water clear of the board, there's so much water out of the water, so many more of those holes in the door. To start with, we've only got the hole in the door right at the top, the rest of it's underwater, but now that the whole door's lifted out of the water and there's another hole down lower, you can pull the control away a bit more, you've got some more options. You can still do those double arm paddles, it's just you have to wait a period of time. Exactly like the technique video we talked about, the masterclass technique video, where if you are plowing and then you're getting on a wave and then you just completely throw technique out the window, you'll fall back in the hole and you won't So you'll notice in that video, exactly the same. I only paddle at a certain moment. Yeah. And that again, as you and just hold, very well hold, hold, speed, 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 paddle, paddle, paddle. It's at the right time. Yeah. So there's no point in trying to double paddle when I'm barely moving, there's yeah. no point. Use the motor to get you up to as fast a speed as you can. Mm -hmm. Then I'll go boom, boom, yeah. really quite quick to just that last little bit to get up and get going. And at that point, the signal is already strong it's really enough. Good. It's really good, all your holes of your door are exposed. And, and it's a go. time thing, so yeah. from factory, these things are set on the app between this and that 0.3 of a second, mm -hmm. 330 milliseconds. Yeah. If it loses whoop, whoop, signal, so mm -hmm. signal, if I go below the table, it takes water, plop, plop, that's within 0.3, plop, plop. Yeah. Plop. Oh, that's too long. Yeah. You can increase the latency, latency. up to half a second. It will not yeah. go any further than that. To to, it's just dangerous yeah. to have it running for more than that. Which the analogy of that is the phone call. Yes, it's the perfect. It's how many phone call. packet dropouts can you have, yeah. and the phone call continues, continues. to run. Yeah. So, so it's if you lose signal for just 0.3 of a second, the phone will call will continue. It doesn't just end, and you don't yeah. have to start the press again. If you push it up to 0.5 of a second, then you can have a bigger dropout of signal yeah. for a longer period of time, and the phone call will still continue. Yeah. But you so can't see that paddle really slowly. Yeah and expect the signal to stay on because you're asking it yeah. to have a phone call drop out for a full second. That's yeah. why when I'm doing it, I'm like boom, boom, quite quick. Yeah. And it's yeah. later in the takeoff process yeah. when more holes in the door have been exposed. Yeah. Again, we're making this sound like it's really, really hard. Using a four-wheel drive on a prone board is a harder skill, yes. Foiling is a harder skill. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff comes down to personal like we've said multiple times already, education of how it works, some tips and techniques, yep. and then practice. Some people will pick this stuff up really quick, yep. other people will take a little bit longer, some people will have a glass board that is a glass board that is 140 litres for a 60 kilo guy, yep. and you just, the difficulty level of the setup yep. and what I'm trying to do is, is easy, mm -hmm. versus a heavy guy on a 28 litre prone board that is full carbon, that is sunk underwater trying to downwind. That is an exceptionally tall order for somebody who's just grabbed the gear and yeah. expecting to just jump in the water and use it. Yeah. None right. of this is overly hard. Yes, there is some techniques and some understandings and there's some timing. That's why sports and foiling is so rewarding as well, that you have to come through some little challenges. And this is not something that is unachievable or unattainable. Not at all. It's just understanding. It's knowledge knowledge, a little bit of practice, some help from tips and techniques, yeah. and you will 100% enjoy the product yeah. very thoroughly. And again, like we said at the start, we've helped 
heaps of people at events and said, give me your gear, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, that arm you jump straight board. on and you jump straight up. Arm strong board at Marimbula, no one forget it to get over. I grabbed the board, I hop on it and I go up straight yeah. away. We should briefly cover that. Yeah. We talked about carbon boards and we do understand there is carbon boards and carbon tracks. Yeah. There's not many of them out there in terms of brands that do that. We do know that Armstrong FG boards have carbon tracks. There's one uh, Takuma board, the Rising Sun, something like that. Takoon over in France. Uh, and there's a couple of others that we've got on the website. We should preface this video that this is February 2024 too. So we're a couple of months after release and we are working on solutions to improve solution. the carbon track board. Why is the carbon track board, without going crazy in depth in this, because it's something that we're going to resolve anyway, but for the purpose of this video at its time of release, the carbon tracks, we talked about how carbon is a material that blocks signal, mm -hmm. and the boards, whether it's this really high quality particular board that is quite difficult to get through the yep. uh, couple of layers, or this board that's carbon fiber that's different, yep. or that that's not carbon, the carbon tracks is a big chunk of carbon. So what it is, so you've got your doors, yes, and then you've got your carbon fiber doors, which only got a few holes. Mm -hmm. The carbon fiber tracks, it's like imagine if someone put another door yeah. behind or those a mattress, doors, or a, no, just a bed sheet, just or another a door with no holes in it, yeah, apart from a tiny few little yeah. itty itty holes here and there. And zoom in big time on the materials that make up a carbon track. There's still there are still holes, so it's just one a door, bigger chunk. Of Another door, they've got some holes in here and even less holes in here. When I say right. that, there's a tiny bit of one. Yeah. And if you get it to just the right angle, boom, it will go through, but yeah. it's really difficult. That's yeah. why mm -hmm. some people with an Armstrong board or other boards that's full carbon and full carbon tracks mm -hmm. are like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm riding it, it's fine. Mm -hmm. They're using the technique correctly mm -hmm. and they're still making it work to get through. I had to put the control on the board mm -hmm. We were riding literally Army's board. We literally Army's Army. board. Yeah. I had to put it on the deck, get it moving, wait for all the water to part way, mm -hmm. get to my feet, keep the controller near the deck, yeah. and then stand up and pop up, and I was off foiling. Yeah. As soon as I tried to hold it above the deck and just lie on the board going, it's not working. Yeah. Which is what Army was doing. <laughs> he didn't know. He didn't know. We but showed him, and then he had an absolute. He came problem. back in, had a quick chat with him, yeah. you know, gave him his 10 seconds of info yeah. which he did he put the control on the board he got link he got going and he got up and he went and had a great time and same with jeremy oscar. and oscar and all that around having yeah. a great time yeah they just which put the knowledge quickly to use and boom they had a very different yeah. experience and you can totally see how some people come back having had a session that didn't know some of these fundamentals mm -hmm. where it just doesn't work yeah and so exactly. like, what does work for me so i think we've got that message across. i think so yeah and Again, we fully understand that that's not, it comes down to people's perception of what's acceptable, unacceptable, what's easy, what's hard, how much time they have to mess with it and try and work it out, or whether they just want a simple and easy solution. Mm. If you want the easiest, simplest, most user-friendly setup, a big, ginormous glass board, well, anything technically, glass. anything glass, anything but even glass. a 140-litre glass board, that is the best thing for signal. But we all understand that we don't really want to ride that. If you want to ride a small carbon board, well then you just have to understand that the importance of understanding a technique just goes up. The harder and harder you make it. No exactly the wings. same now. It's no different to wings. Exactly. You can ride a eighteen hundred square centimetre wing and it's pretty easy, lots of lift, very forgiving, but it's not very fast and it's not very fun to yeah. foil or turn or, or whatever if you're talking specifically surf. Boards kind of become the same thing, using a full drive kind of becomes the same thing. There's various levels of mm. easy, lazy, and hard, but rewarding and fun. Yep. The carbon boards with carbon tracks at the moment are the hardest setup to use. You can still use them. Yep. There is some modification you can do to boards, very simple stuff with tracks that make it even easier, or make it easier to use, but it is still difficult. Yep. And we do understand that lots of people want to run these Exotic boards with exotic foil tracks. <laughs> with exotic foil drives. <laughs> with exotic foil <laughs> drives. And maybe in big guy, small board, sup board, but very small sup board because I've got a motor and still in downwind. Again, piling up the difficulty level, but then want to make it easy. So we are 
designing and making long-term solutions to make your four-wheel drive work with those things. Yep. Um, again, we're always trying to keep everyone happy. External patch and turn of thing is still coming along. Yep. It does actually work. This and it does exist. It's not yeah. just a this isn't a pipe frame. Yeah. This is we don't do coming soon that don't exist. No, no, we don't do that. Um, so that will come. It will yep. be an external thing. You stick it on. You can run an antenna, and you can just do whatever you want. Exactly. And again, um, even if you're lazy but want a hard system, that could help. <laughs> it is. Well, it's just lazy we're trying technique, to. But, we're trying to let. Everyone use anything which, believe me, is a tall order. It is not easy. Anyone that makes something will understand just how hard it is to make a retrofittable product mm. that has to work on everything. Yeah, it's hard. Uh, it's very easy to make your own product where everything fits in, and that's what you have to sell. Like if we made our own board with our own Gen Two, yeah, fully built in. That's the easiest thing in the world mm -hmm. to get right because you can control everything from day one. We're doing the hardest thing. In the industry, which is make a truly retrofittable thing, but it's nice to ride. Rolls. It's nice to ride. You see carpeted cables and crap going everywhere. Um, and in doing that, yes, there is a small percentage at the end of the spectrum that it don't quite fit in. But the, yeah. ov the overall mm -hmm. works for this. Yeah. There's always going to be some percentage that is difficult. We're working on yeah. clearly closing that end gap. Yeah, and we so rode. We cool. did personally ride a test that really hard end of it, but we know all this knowledge really, really well. We know the technique, we know the persistence to make it work. So, yeah. you know, that that did work for us. And we have lots of customers out there riding these at a very difficult end of the spectrum going, yeah, I'm having a ball, I don't know what everyone's talking about. Yeah. And then there's the people that are going, oh, it just doesn't work, I pull the trigger and it doesn't work. That's fair enough too. So I hope with education, understanding, tips and techniques, and some actual hardware changes um, coming very soon, yeah. that, yeah, everyone can have more fun more easily and get out there and enjoy it. So, I don't think we mentioned you. Please put the foam in the foam in the tracks. Yeah, just do it. Yeah, it, it, it works so much better. For sure. Ahead of your bolts and between your bolts is the most important area. Yeah. Um, behind the bolts, back towards the tail is not as important. It can definitely help, but certainly between the two, the front and rear bolts. If and you're on the edge, edge just yeah. fill your entire track up. Exactly. Yep. It'll make it just makes everything better. Yeah. Proximity, get it closer, it makes it better. Wait a second. Yeah. Then slowly pull it, let the water drain off, get speed, then yep. get up. The understanding of the board moving, clearing water, yep. at different speeds too. We've had people saying, Well, I put cruise control on and I have lots of signal problems. Does cruise control have the same signal strength? Mm -hmm. It's all the same. It's just that maybe your cruise control speed is slightly too slow for the board and the setup and your technique then your board sinks back down and now you've only got two holes in the door yep. exposed and you're on a sup and you're up high and now you're only shooting at two holes but if you go from 36% being the standard cruise control value to 40, yes you're going to burn a bit more power but the board moving that tiny bit faster and the, yep. the hull is coming up and out of the water a little bit and now you've exposed six more holes in your board or your door. I think one thing we did overlook go. in the early days is, I don't know, is anyone left handed in four drive? Jamie's left handed. Jamie doesn't count. Jamie doesn't count, he's a freak. Yeah, we, we don't like Jamie. We love Jamie. <laughs> he's yes. irritatingly good at everything. Uh, when you hear it comes into this whole point, yeah, when you're people that are irritatingly good and they get it, and we've had people that take a while to get things. He's very, anyway. He's yeah. <laughs> if you've got a left hand, the antenna isn't on this side of the remote, it's on the left hand side of the remote. Yeah. So if you're a left hander and you're grabbing the nose of the board, Technically, your antenna's up here. It should still work just mm. fine, but if you're looking for those last few percent of extra signal, because you've stacked up the difficulty, you've stacked small everything, board, heavy rider, yeah. water, carbon tracks, carbon, 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 carbon board, carbon, carbon track. track yeah. um, as a, just a last ditch effort, you can you can actually try reversing. Yeah, flip it over. Flip it over. Just use your thumb. Mm. I know it sounds ghetto and silly, but it can actually help because technically. Closer you can get the left hand side of the remote to the board, the better. We have to have a side, you can't have it on both. So, everyone globally, predominantly, people are right handed. Yep. So, that's why we have left. Mm -hmm. But the best thing is just keep grabbing like that, get going, slide your hand back, stand up, get going, you're off. Yeah. Again, I think the best thing about foil bark is that it is retrofit. Yes, it sucks if you have to get a new board to make life easier, but if that's what you want, again, if you buy the wrong foil, and yes, you could foil it, but you need to 
progress so far and you're like, I'm just not up for this ball yet, you get a slightly bigger one, you press it and you're having a ball. Boards could end up being the same kind of thing like that too for some people. We don't, want, like, we don't want people to have to change boards. No. But one thing I will say is the majority of people that write Gen 2 on a frequent basis now have actually come back to me and said, I've ended up changing board, not because they had to, but because they've worked out that they can write smaller, yeah. funner boards yeah. um, from swing weight and weight perspective. And they've ended up with the knowledge of that the material actually makes a difference. Yeah. They've chosen to get a board that's definitely not carbon tracks. Yeah. And some have gone down the glass route. So they've stayed with carbon. By the same token, how many people were writing or or 23 litre boards proning, catching no waves. Once they out, they love their tiny little pocket rocket board. And you now riding, <laughs> no, but are now riding four wheel drive mid length. It makes life easier to get started. The mid length boards make it easier to get on foil. Yep. And people have actually gone the other way mm. of going from a 4.4 four, tiny 28 litre board I've done that. to a 4.10 40 litre board. Not a huge change, but technically, mm. In foiling right now, that's a step backwards. It's funny, right. so interestingly, we started really big subs. Went all the way, way down. Right down to four fours, four twos. Yeah. And now I personally back to just the five by fifty litre. Exactly. One board does yeah. everything. And this will be the same thing. You, everyone will come up with their own board and their own setup and their own technique yep. with the understanding that is a compromise. Everything in foiling and in the world is a compromise between ease of use, performance, and what you're trying to do. You can, you can go. I can. You can both still ride a four-two board, mm -hmm. and we can still downwind a four-two board. But it's a pain in the ass to get up. See when you're up. Diminishing returns. <laughs> or you take, as you said, the 5 40 liter, mm -hmm. and you get up super easy. And there's a slight performance loss while you're up, but you're happy with that compromise. Boards will be the same. Yep. And glass boards are best. Tiny little carbon fibre, small sinker, and carbon track boards are the worst. Find where you're happy with in between yep. as well. So, and Chinese whispers gets out of hand. Yeah, Gen Two's got signal issues. It's like there are literally I don't know how many are out there. There's a lot out there now. Mm. It's a very small percentage of people having problems, and I hope and I'm very confident that after watching this video, if yep. you're having those issues and you've been sent the link and you've taken the time to listen to this, mm -hmm. a lot of those people will go back into the pool of, oh, I'm having fun now, I'm not having a problem. Right. And the, the people left over will be a very incredibly small, small percentage yeah. that may just have uh, uh, their full carbon tracks and a board situation that they can't get to work because, again, as you said, they're trying to do just a different kind of thing. Yeah. Kind of downwind on a four two, mm -hmm. and the water slow patients. Just <laughs> yeah. So we're doing our best. Yeah. To make sure everyone has fun. Yeah. And we're trying to be open and honest. Again, we don't do things. We don't put stuff out there that is not tested or tried. We know the time and effort goes into this stuff. Well, we know you guys know that. Rob Piros used to write e files all the time. Yeah. And he raves about the signal quality of Gen 2s. Like it's like, it would not kick ass to work. Like yeah. I've never ducked on any foil. Yeah, but we fully understand that we need to educate people uh, continually and in this case, better and sooner that not everyone understands this stuff inherently like Paul and I do and a lot of our test riders do. There's various levels of understanding people. For sure. We've covered all this stuff six times over in the last 10 minutes. I think we'll start off here. <laughs> Hopefully that's helpful. Look out for the masterclass videos. Go check out all that sort of stuff. We've got heaps of really useful content, whether it's educational stuff like this or tips and techniques and masterclass stuff with guys that you know made this stuff over on YouTube and on our help center. So please use those um, uh, pieces of information. We put a lot of effort into it. And if there's anything else that we missed or anything that you want us to do, these kind of styles of talks about particular yeah. topics, yeah. send it in. Um, it's great. We're loving how this sport's going and where it's going and where our foil drive customers are taking it. It's pretty exciting stuff. So thanks guys. Bye. Cheers. Cheers.